Now welcome to the absolutely stunning Packington fishery. Now this is probably my favourite commercial fishery. Even though I don't come here loads, every single time I come here, I wish I came here more because it's just beautiful. There's loads of different types of lakes here, there's loads of fish to catch. It's just awesome. Now I'm going to show you what Packington has to offer and hopefully catch a load of fish while we're at it. Well, at Packington, you've got absolutely loads of lakes. I mean, this is a bit of a nice artist impression of the fishery. And as you can see, there's absolutely loads of lakes. Now, we're going to go here on Big Gearies. Now, I've been told Peg 13, so which is, I think, down here on the high bank somewhere. But we'll have a closer look at the lake. But as you can see, there's just loads of lakes to go at. You've got Molens, which is a massive snake lake type thing, but it's like 30 metres wide, so you can chuck a method, waggler, whatever you want on there. You've got Siblings A and B, which are like pole type waters. You've got anniversaries, which is all sort of nooks and crannies. You've got little gearies, which is like a F1 bag in water. You've got all these like little lakes around here. You've got Willow, which is full of F1s. You've got Reedy Bay, First Bay, Alder, Crescent. All these little waters that are perfect for pleasure fishing as well. There's all sorts in there. Carp, tench, F1 skimmers, you name it. So there's pretty much something for everyone. I think we're going to get a sandwich and uh, get some pellets and then we'll do some fishing. I can't wait, it's going to be really good. Hope to catch some nice big carp and loads of skimmers on gearies. One thing I quickly forgot to mention before we head inside and get some stuff. Packington has got a really strong veterans match circuit, so there could be up to 80 veterans here on a, on a weekday. And today is a Thursday and there's loads of guys here fishing what is going to be a veterans match. So if you are looking for over 60s matches, Packington is a great place to come because there's a great circuit here. Loads of friendly guys and they catch loads of fish as well. So. Yeah, let's get inside and uh, let's get some bait. Morning. New fish himself, look. Hello. Hello. Look at this, they've got JC pastes and clumps and everything you could ever need. Bits and bobs. Great to see them in stock though. Everyone wants them. Fishery pellets here at Packington. Now one thing I love about this, look at the price of them. Nice and cheap, two quid a bag, or you can have four bags for seven quid, or you can have a bulk bag of eight bags, a bulk pack of eight bags for 12 quid. So really good value. So even though it is fishery pellets, probably actually saving you a bit of money anyway because they're nice and cheap. So fair play Packington, great price on the fishery pellets. Got myself a nice little bacon sandwich. Question is, and get in the comments below, are you a brown sauce or are you a red sauce? Now, I'm going for brown today, but let us know in the comments, brown or red? Oh yes. Look at all these lakes, look. So these are all them little sort of waters that we showed you. We'll get the drone up later and have a look though. Better look. There's loads of, just loads of water in here. And as you can see, it's just a beautiful place. Now we want, I've been told, I've been tipped off, that peg 13 on the big gear is, is where we want to be. Look, at there's loads of people fishing already, look. Our fate, anglers everywhere. They're not on the match. Pleasure anglers. Which is great to see on an October day, loads of people fishing. So here we are, big gearies. This is where we're going. And this is the high bank, which is quite a, like a prominent area of the lake. <clears throat> and someone's got this brown colour on it, this lake. I think we're along here somewhere, so we need to drop back. There's loads of anglers over there as well. Right, we're looking for peg 13. No parking on the high bank. I'm going to have to just have a look, see where the peg is. Let's have a look. Not that one, back in the van. <laughs> Thirteen, peg thirteen. God, this looks nice, doesn't it? Peg thirteen. The carp. Oh, look there. 
Oh, this looks ace. Whisper it, but I might catch some on pace down there later on. Can't wait, let's get some kit out and uh, do some fishing. This looks great. There's carp on the top. Best just soak my pellets. No, no, <laughs> no, they're my pellets. No. Are you gonna let. <laughs> oh. Always one for the wildlife, me. Here. He likes pellets. I'm trying to soak these for the method. Leave me alone. I think it's really important to be organised when it comes to rigs and preparation. As you can see, I've got a, everything you could ever need. <laughs> Might not be in anywhere where I can actually find it, but it's there. So I'm going to have a 0.4 collet. Um, what else do I need? I need a pace float, but I can't find one. There's one. I'll have him. And we need a skimmer float, but they're not in there. They're in here because I am organising this draw up. Can't get into it, but I am organised. Oh, floats. Rigs. I fancy a 4 by 12 Cipri for them skimmers. Oh, 414s might be good actually. And a 412s. There's a 412s. There. Right. Simple. Very organised, me. I need a lot, so I don't intend to feed up down bait, but. Oh, that margin was up But, I kind of told myself I'm not going to just pace it. <laughs> well, I might be kidding myself on that one. Oh, that looks nice. I'm just going to probably feed a little bit of that with a few micros in it, the skimmers. Just li you know, really little balls. So it's important, it needs to, I need to get quite a bit of water in it. That'll dry out, and then I'll be able to put some micros through it, and it should be quite nice for them skinners. I fancy that rather than loose feeding fours. I fancy fishing six mils on the long pole. And I don't want to confuse it by having pellets rattling in on two spots. I'd rather have one where the six mils are pinging in to attract the carp, and then have something quieter for the skimmers. But we'll uh, sounds good in theory, but we'll uh, work it out as we fish. It. Right, so settled in on peg 13 on Geary's. And like I said, I haven't fished this lake for years. I actually, last time I fished it was in a Angling Trust silverfish competition. And I drew over there on peg 16. And I actually won the match uh, with loads of little skimmers. But that was probably five or six years ago. And I haven't been on here since. Uh, so I've got a bit of an idea what to do. Because I asked John before I came. Uh, but I'm going to make it up on the fly a little bit. So I've set up two pole rigs and two uh, like uh, lines to fish. And I've set up one rod. Now, I'll go through the rod first. It's an 11 foot, like a distance type rod. And when, there's some posts, there's like a gravel bar that runs out there. And it must be, I haven't sticked it up or anything, but it's certainly over 50 meters. It might be 60 meters to them posts, something like that. And I'm gonna chuck a little hybrid feeder out there and just see if I can nick a few fish early. But then I know you catch a lot of fish on a bomb and pellet. So I'm gonna ping some eight mils out there. With the same rod, I'll just take the feeder off and the hook length off and put a bomb on instead. But I fancy fishing like little PVA bags either with a pellet hook bait or a worm hook bait. We'll show you that as we're getting going. And then on the pole, I've set up two rigs. Now the first one is gonna be for skimmers. I've picked a spot at about 11 meters. Uh, and it's a bulk float, it's a 0.4 bulk. It's about, it's just on a join. So it's like four and a bit foot. And I'm gonna fish pellets on this. I'm gonna fish micros, a tiny bit of ground bait, and then an expander on the hook. Or I've even softened some four mil feed pellets, which can be, really good for skimmers so I've done them as well now at the top I've got yellow zip six to eight it's a bit of an awkward bank here there's a high bank behind you so I've gone for the yellow but I might even drop down to the pink I'll see what the stamp of the fish is like when it's awkward behind you sometimes a softer elastic is an advantage so you don't bump as many fish I've got a little pot on the end 
and then I've got 016 mainline and I've got a 0.4 bulk. It's about right, I think, for this sort of uh, weather. Now, I've, interestingly, I've plumbed it up to the middle of the body. So I'll just mark that while I'm at it. Middle of the body, which I think is about right for expanders. It's quite flat today, so I think we can get away with that. If it was to get a little bit windier, I'd put another inch on, but that should be fine. Down at the bottom, I've got a really simple um, setup. I've got a bulk and two droppers. But as you can see, everything is within 12 inches of the hook. I want to get my bait down. I want to catch them on the bottom. So this is all about getting the bait down, that expander pellet, and registering the bike quickly. So I've got a little bulk of number nines, and then I've got two number 10 droppers. And that last number 10 is just, that's a three inch hook length. That's really close to the hook. And I think that that is going to be perfect for seeing those shy skimmer bites. Uh, hook is a 16 B911 F1 and the hook length is 012 because I might hook some carp and because we're just pleasure fishing today I would quite like to get them out if I, if I uh, hook one so we've gone for 012. On the carp front I'm going to fish about 14 metres something like that uh, pinging hard 6mm pellets because I've been told that that's a really good approach on here. Uh, I've gone for the black zip and then as is always the case with my videos, I've got a 0.4 collet on there. I love them for hard pellet fishing. I could dot it down or I could leave a little bit showing, but I can see it, that's the main thing. I've coloured it black, in fact, I need to do it again. And I've plumbed this one up, again, bottom of the body. This time, so I'll just mark that on there. Bottom of the body, about right for hard pellets. If it gets towing, I'll put a little bit more line on. And then the same shotting pattern I always use for my hard pellet fishing, those shots sort of two to three inches apart. So I've got number nines, and it's just as simple as that. And then I've just got 016 hook length and a 16 B911 extra strong. So nice strong enough tackle that should I hook small carp or big carp, I should get them out. So we'll have a quick look at the bait and then I'm itching to get going really. It's a, it's a lovely day actually for an October day. I don't know how the fishing's gonna be. It might be hard, it might be good. But, um, it's a beautiful venue, it's a beautiful peg, and I can't wait to get going. So let's have a quick look at the bait and then we'll get fishing. As you can see, quite simple. We've just got pellets, basically. Now, I'll start off with the uh, ground bait to feed the micros in. Now, I'm just going to feed for the skimmers. I love on commercial feeding, like a strong ground bait with a few particles in. This could be pinkies, dead maggots. But today, I'm just going to fish with expanders and soften four mils. I love feeding just tiny little balls like that. So there's a few, every single time you feed one of them, there's a few micros in there. And I just found on commercials that skimmers are much easier to catch when you can catch them over a tiny little amount of bait. Um, there are, there's a time and a place for putting a big bed of bait down. But when I'm fishing like this, I, I don't think it's today. So I've just mixed up a nice little bit of pole mix and just put a couple of handfuls of micros in there. So every time I feed a little tiny nugget, there's a few scattering of micros in there. So that's the uh, bait for the skimmers. And then for the hook, I've got some four milli expanders and then I've got the creme de la creme of hook pellets. These are four mil Primer Trax pellets. Now, they are the best pellet I've ever put on the hook for skimmers. They're just, they're a feed pellet. So I've only done a few just for the hook, but you can put them on like you just, they're just amazing. I just covered them in water, left them in the fridge and they're bang on. They're just, I'll show you more about them when we get fishing, but I'm in love with them pellets at the moment. Fantastic. On the carp front, I've just got some micros that I've soaked up, again, just by covering them in water and leaving them. They're gonna be used for the sort of hybrid banjo feeder. Um, nothing special about them, just, just nice micros. And then I've got some eight mils and I've got some six mils to loose feed on the pole and on the bomb. Now for the bomb, I've also made up, I've just quickly sat and whizzed up a few PVA bags. And these have just got like a cad pot amount of six mils. I've just put six mils in there. And what I'm gonna do a little bit different for me. I'm going to actually dip them in a little bit of a dip. This is just like a bait booster. I found with this PVA bag fishing that dunking your bag definitely gets you more bites. Now the hook bait for the PVA bag, I've got some 8 mil pellets, I've got some different coloured wafters, but what I really fancy catching on is a bunch of worms. I did a video on my own channel recently about this, putting like a, a Medusa of worms on like that, putting five or six worms on and it was working brilliantly so i'm going to try it today they're big fish in this lake and i think that could score so that's what we've got i think we should get some bait in i'm not i'm going to take it really steady to start with i'm just going to put in a little nugget on the on the skimmer line a few six mils long and a few on the on the um, farm bomb and bag line and then we're going to kick off over near that gravel bar so let's get on with it as promised i'm just going to kick off with a little 
little ball of ground. And I'm actually just going to put a pinch of loose in as well, just to, so that can just sort of cloud the water a little bit. And I've chose to fish this at about 12 metres. Now, when you're feeding such tiny amounts of bait, be a bit careful because obviously the bank's high and awkward behind. And when you're feeding such tiny amounts of bait, it's crucial to be accurate. Now, I'm very fortunate today in that we've got a beautiful yellow tree on its own, and I'm going to put everything in the line with that from my seat position. And that's just going to go in there, and it seems like a tiny amount of bait, but for some reason, commercial skimmers you can catch them like that. And then on the long pole line, I'm going to put in. Just a little pinch of six mils. I'm not going to go mad. But I am going to put a little pinch of six mils in. Let's just wash that out because I don't really want any ground bait on that long line. If you can help it. Right, I'm just going to put in like, I don't know, a dozen pellets, something like that. Now, as you can see in the bottom of my pot, you can probably see it if I turn it around that way. I've drilled some little holes in. Now, some pots you can buy now, I've already got that done. But I haven't bought any yet. And what I do, I fill my pot up and I let the water drain out of it. Just puts a skin on them pellets and means that when I put them out there, they're gonna sink, which I think is really important. When you wanna be accurate, that's really important. Sometimes if you just put them straight in your pot and don't dunk them, they'll float and drift off a little bit. I want them to be in the spot where I'll pitch the fish. Now again, accuracy, really important. Just navigate this bank. And I've picked another positive marker for this which is that island there that's out there in the main part of the lake. And I'm going to feed right on the end of my pole. And I'm just going to pop them pellets in, nice and accurate, right in the middle of that island. Now, one thing I like to do, because I'm going to feed with a catapult, I like to get my range. So I've just got my catapult. I'm just going to put a couple of pellets in the pouch. I'm just going to ping them out just to get my range. Just gives me a, a visual marker to sort of aim at when I'm feeding, because obviously I don't want to feed while I'm on the bomb and feed them and stuff, like way past my pole tip. Obviously you're gonna get a bit of spread, but I just wanna get a feel for it, so that feels good to me. And I think, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start on that banjo feeder chucked to that post. I think that that's gonna be a nice way to start my day. But that's it, the swim's fed, very lightly, it has to be said. And then we're going to kick off on a feeder up against them posts. When I'm fishing this and it's a bit colder, I like to put a really firm layer of pellets into my feeder, almost like a bit of a paste. It'll take ages to break down, but I'm intending to leave this out there until hopefully I get a bite. So I like that to be quite well pressed in there, just to make sure there's always something on my feeder. It's just something that I, I, I get a lot of confidence doing. I'm just gonna pop that hook bait in there. Interestingly, I'm using this 023 detection hook length. I found detection is like really supple and it kind of stays on the method better than other sort of rig lines that you no normally use for this sort of fishing. I found that the suppleness of the detection works really well. So just something to bear in mind. All right, let's get it out there. This might take a few goes because I haven't done any long casting for a while, but let's give it a go. It'd be dreadful if I cracked off, wouldn't it? But we'll give it a, give it a good yuck out there. No problem. Might even, I'd go further if I wanted it to. I've not got a shock leader on today. That's just six pound detection on the reel, so. And that flew out there absolutely lovely. So let's get that line settled. We'll get a fresh brew on the go. And hopefully that tip will sail round and we can have a nice Geary's carp on. Let's 
skimmer. Yep. First chuck. First bite. And it's not a carp. It's nice to get a bite, isn't it? Now I just chucked out of a pink wafter on. And to be honest, I was expecting a bit of a chew getting this feeder out there, but it flew out there an absolute dream. So I'm tempted to take a bit of line off the clip and try and get a bit tighter to that, that post. But look at that, a <laughs> little tiny skimmer. Not what we wanted, but look at that. That just shows you what I'm talking about, about that protective sort of extra layer of bait in the feeder. So we've got a nice little skimmer just to kick our session off. Look at that in the sun, glistening. Lovely, popping back. But even through the cast, that feeder obviously being in the water, I was reeling back with a fish on, there's still some bait in there. So in my head, there's always some attraction around your feeder, which I think when you're chucking out and waiting for bites, that's a good thing. I think when you're trying to build a swim, like in summer, that's no good at all. But I think when you're fishing for, I hate to say this term, one fish at a time, because you can only fish for one fish at a time. But I think when you are fishing for one fish at a time and waiting a long time, Putting that firm layer in there is a good thing. So let's get it loaded back up and hopefully we can catch something that's not a four ounce skimmer. Now, when you do this, you do need to clear out that smeg because we don't want that in there. So once again, let's firmly press those pellets in. I'm using a medium 45, which is a nice size for the sort of distance we're chucking. It's a little missile really. After in the nice firm press. So a nice skinny feeder that's gonna fly out there nice and easy. Right, let's get it out there. I don't know how far that is. I'd hazard a guess it's close to 60 metres anyway. Certainly 55 to 60 metres. And uh, that 11 foot rod and that feeder is making that look easy. It just shows you like a nice balanced setup. This is like, it isn't like a more of a distance style 11 foot rod, but it has got the guts to get that feeder out there. There's a little bit of a wind in our face and it's doing it. So that's a, just something to bear in mind, obviously. You do need to match your kit to the distance you're trying to trying to cast. Now I'm conscious that oh, there's a carp just rolled there, and um, I do think the bulk of the carp might be on that bomb line. So I'm just trickling the pellets in, not many, just threes and fours. And I've picked again. I've lined up with that yellow tree because it's such an obvious place to feed. And I'm bottoming, bottoming my catty out and feeding, hopefully, around the same area. And I'm not putting loads of pellets out there, but I'm just making sure I've got a regular little rattle going in out there. And I think that that's probably where we're gonna catch our carp. Any that we catch on this is, is probably gonna be a bit of a bonus. And I'm also gonna to top that skimmer line up sort of every 20 minutes when I'm not fishing it, just with another little nugget. Um, and then when I fish it, I might even top it up every third or fourth fish, but we'll obviously get into that as we, as we get on it, so. Fingers crossed we get another carp, I need to, uh, oh no, I've got a fresh brew. And let's hope that next time that tiptoes round, we're attached to something about this sort of size, because that'd be nice, wouldn't it? So I'm on my third chuck on the banjo, and first chuck I caught that little skimmer, and second chuck, I wasn't quite happy with my cast, and I think it's really important to get across that if you chuck out and you're not quite happy with it, do it again, because if you've got that bit of doubt in your mind, especially when you're waiting, like today we could be waiting 20 minutes, 30 minutes for a bite, you've got to be confident that you sat on a, on a good cast and I wasn't happy, so I reeled it in and I've done it again. But one thing that's immediately obvious, I don't think, I've got a feeling the car pan on that bar, I'm not getting any indications, no liners. And every carp I've seen, because there's been a few Bosch out and roll and stuff, it has been halfway, and if anything, my side and middle, so where I'm feeding them eight mils on the bomb line seems to be where the fish are, visually anyway. Obviously, there might be fish that are not showing, obviously, but 
tends to be at this time of year, if you can find the fish porpoising and boshing out and stuff, they're starting to gather up for winter and it's a bit of a telltale sign. So I don't want to waste too much of my day on this if all them fish are on that sort of bomb line. I've just seen another one actually just stick its head out then. So I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. It doesn't mean I'm going to catch them, of course, but... I could be chucking 30 metres past the fish on this. I did think I'd probably pick up an odd one or two. I didn't, that's all I thought this was gonna be, a, a quick starter line really, but I did expect a cart first chuck, I've gotta be honest. It hasn't happened yet, it's got time yet. I'll give it. I'll give this cast 20 minutes, and then if, if nothing happens, I'm gonna get on that bomb, because I feel like that that's gonna be, a, certainly visually, that's where the bulk of the carp are. Right. No liners or indications or anything on that. And I just keep, like I just mentioned, I just keep seeing fish rolling on the bomb line or around the bomb line. So I've got to have a chuck. And I've prepared myself the Medusa. Now anyone who's seen on my channel, my own personal channel, will see I did a video just last week about this. Big bunch of worms. It's something that the cart boys has taken the cart world by storm to the point where waters are banning it. And I tried it the other week for the first time at Medlands and caught loads of fish on it. So I'm actually going to send that out. So I've got a big bunch of worms on and a PVA bag that's been dunked in smelly stuff. And hopefully that will get us off the mark cart wise. So I'm just going to ping out a few pellets just to get me distance. Try and get this right on the money. Donk. Right. Let's see if the Medusa can get us among those carp. If not, we might have to go back to the uh, more traditional, like a just a pellet. But I'll just set. I'll set me stopwatch, and hopefully that big bunch of worms catches a nice Packington carp to get our day off and running. Go on the Medusa. Right, <laughs> first chuck on the bomb with that big worm hook bait and it's gone round and I tell you what, it's not a bad fish at all. Great bite, found that with this. I know you get great bites on the bomb and pellet anyway but I don't know why, they just take this with absolute gusto. That's <laughs> not a bad fish at all to start our day. Look at that beauty, wallowing in. Oh, oh, oh. It's a big fish that, on the quiet. <laughs> I just sort of doubted myself a bit. I was like, oh, I expected a bite on that hybrid up to the... Uh, Post. I don't know. But then the worm Medusa hasn't let me down, and that is a big fish to start the day. Cracking. Well chuffed with that. We weren't even expecting a bite really because the old cameraman went off getting some nice scenic shots and god knows what else, and then off she went. Look at that, the worms are. I mean, that's a big old mouth. Look at the size of that. And just got one worm left out of the six I put on, but he's an absolute beauty. Look at that. Let's see if we can have a look at him. <laughs> he wallowed in a bit, but I'll tell you what, he's beating me up in the landing net. But that is a cracking start to our session. And I'm going to get him back, so I don't want to hurt him. Look at that. I mean, that's eight or nine pound of anyone's money. Go on, son. <laughs> And that is one nil to the worm. One cast, one carp. Fantastic. Shall we uh, show you how I've rigged it up? Because it is a little bit of a quirky little rig, but it, it works and it's... Basically, I've got a T360 hook and I've got a little gripper stop on the line and then a quick stop. I'll move that up. Now the reason for the bead will come apparent when I've got some worms on there. So first thing we need to do is get the quick stop on the needle. And like I say, this has been taking big cart waters apart. So 
I'm always trying to learn off them guys. And I thought it's worth a try. And so far, I think I've had two sessions with it. And I've caught a carp on every cast. <laughs> bar one. And I think I caught a bream on that cast. Which is unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, I'm one for one in it today. So there's... I mean, it looks ridiculous, doesn't it? But we put two worms on down the edge. So why not have a big hook bait like that? We're trying to target big carp. Now, what I've found is a nice little way of doing things. Is to get a pair of scissors and just neaten it up a bit. As in... Oh, I've got a bit of a mess here. Like, just take the end off the worms a little bit. Just to, obviously, release a few juices. Just make it a bit more of a slightly smaller, neater pile of bait. You could put them in some ground bait or something. And then that little bead slides down. It just stops them crawling back up the hair. That little bead is just enough to keep them worms in a bunch and stop them coming up and masking the hook. So we've got that on there. Now all we've been doing is popping a PVA bag on. Now it's come quite popular to pop a PVA bag on with your hook bait and leave it soaking for a long time, like five minutes. But what I've found is sometimes it can um, slow the breakdown in your bag too much to when I've actually tested it in a tank, it never breaks down, <laughs> which is obviously not what you want. So what I've found is you must leave the bit where your hook is unsoaked, if that makes sense, or undipped. So I'm di dipping that in there, but only half of the bag. So if I was to make up the hook bait and the bag in advance and leave it soaking, I'd make sure at least half of the bag was unsoaked, if that makes sense. And then that bit's going to melt nice and quickly around the hook and leave my hook free. And then the other bit, if it does take a while to break down, it isn't the end of the world. So let's get it back out there because that was brilliant. <laughs> right, let's get it back out there. Just, uh, just like of any bomb and pellet fishing, I just like to fire a few out just to get my range. And make a mental note of where they've gone and then pop it back out there. Perfect, right in. Feel it down. Trap set. So let's see if we can get another, because that <laughs> was an absolute beauty to start the day. And I think that the bomb and pellet, or bomb and bag, however you want to describe it, will only get better from here. Now, in a match, I think it's probably important to say if you do want to try this worm thing in a match, it's probably best to have another hook length on the go because it is a bit fiddly putting all them worms on. So it'd be a good idea to have another hook, hook bait on the go, hook length on the go, so you can quickly get them worms on that hair and then be ready for your next cast because it is a little bit fiddly. But because we're only pleasure fishing today, it's not, not the end of the world. Now off camera, I have topped that skimmer line up once. So we've been fishing an hour and I've topped up that skimmer line once. So I'll probably do another feed because I wanted to do it every sort of 20 minutes or so. We've been fishing an hour, we've had that little skimmer on the on the feeder, and then we've had that beautiful carp that we just had on the on the bomb. Great start. I'm happy with that. Like I say, it is a bit of a slow start in late this one. So that is a great start. And I expect the action to hopefully just get better as the day goes on. But I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll fish this bomb for a little while and then we might have a drop on the skimmer line just to see if any of those skimmers have settled. I definitely got to feed it again within the next sort of few, I'll try, I'll fish this cast out, give this one 15 minutes and then I'm going to feed it with another one of them little blobs of ground bait. So yeah, excellent. Well chuffed with that. Well, we're two for two on the worm. Funny bite that, it was like a quick rat, wrap and then a total drop back and I struck, thought I'd not got anything and then connected with it a good few wines back, it was weird. It doesn't feel like a carp actually, it could be a bream or something. But it's a fish. It hasn't done a lot, it's, it's really weird fishing actually, there's not, not getting no liners, no indications. Really strange. And what things notice, since I've gone on this, the fish have actually started rolling out by the gravel bar, the, the, the posts. So whether they've backed off already, I'm not sure. It must be a carp actually this, because it started doing a bit. But that's two for two on the worm, which means 
my record on it is fantastic so far. <laughs> In the two sessions I've tried it. Yeah, it's carp. Now you'll notice that I've just used the same rod for this as I have for me method and I think that that's such a good thing about that ICS system you can set one rod up and, and use it for two things it really does work well makes makes it fishing really easy obviously you can set two rods up if you want but I'm a simple guy it's a little ghost for this cracking little ghosty It's a bit of a, a bit of a cricket bat that one. Oh. <laughs> he's seen. Uh, he's not the prettiest. He won't win any awards for beauty, that's for sure. But it's two for two, and we're getting somewhere. I'm going to top that skimmer line up though. That's key because we want to keep that going. Look at that. The worms are. Looking not so lifelike anymore. So just had that second carp, and I mentioned that I wanted to top up every sort of 20 minutes. So I'm just going to put in another one of those little new gars of ground bait and micro mix. Interestingly, I haven't seen any blows or anything like that on my bait. Which on these like older lakes like this, sometimes you obviously do get a few blows and stuff. So, but there's no, there's not a lot of bait there either. So obviously we can be. Super accurate and quite frugal. Now I'm going to break the pole down because I haven't really just had my pole taken out my tractor. But let's get this worm going again because I can't wait. I'm so excited about this worm if you can't tell. It just works. I'm into things that work. I'm going to put a fresh hook bait on though because they all look a bit mangled then. I'm going to start going through one end and then the other because I don't want to keep using a kilo of worms just as hook bait. Whereas if I fold them in half and then chop that middle bit, that's probably a better way of doing it. So I'm going in through the saddle and then folding the worm back over on itself. Bring that gripper stop down, it's a bit fiddly, but you get my point. And then where I've folded the worms back, I'm just gonna chop them. Like so. Look at that, what fish can resist? Just looks great, doesn't it? I'll slip a PVA bag. I'm not even gonna dip it this time, even though we've caught two, I'm just gonna leave it like that. What what fish can resist that? That's just ace, isn't it? out there and I'm just going to catch one more on this and I'm actually going to go on the pole because I'd like to see if we can catch some nice skimmers and also we've got that pinging line as well to try right can we go free for free on the worm. That is the that is the that is the question on everyone's lips. Can we go free for free on the worm? Free for free. Took the worm out and <laughs> the bite then. Just took the rod off the rest. Great fishing. It works. It works, that's for sure. I've I've had it. You know, I spoke to some friends who were sort of pioneers of this t this method for the carp scene, the big carp scene, and it's just taking waters apart to the point, like I say, where worms are getting banned now. And he was actually, interestingly, saying that it is more of a, w a winter, autumn thing than it is summer. I know as match anglers, we regard worms as more of a summer bait, but the carp lads think of it more as a winter bait. And he reckons you can chuck that big Medusa out almost as a single hook bait and, it, and catch carp right the way through the winter. 
I think that that's something that's so interesting. It's obviously such a... Oh, I was up right in the bottom lip there. It's obviously such an instinctual thing to eat a worm, as opposed to a pellet. But you get these incredible bites and um, great hook holes. That was up to the bottom lip before it obviously uh, popped the hook out itself, but another four or five pound carp. And I'm gonna keep feeding that. I'm gonna have a little look for some skimmers because I'm itching just to see if there's any two things. I actually want to do a bit of skimmer fishing, which is obviously nice. But I also want to just want to see if there's some fish over that bait and monitor it, whether I need to up it, um, add a bit more, a bit less, more regular. So let's get on that uh, skimmer line. That's enough of that. Enough of the excitement for the worm, as much as I love it. And we'll try and catch some skimmers. Right, let's have a little go for these skimmers. Now I'll just put one of those softened four mil feed pellets on to start with, rather than the uh, expanders. I do, if I can, get bites on these rather than expanders. I do prefer them. I think they just show the bites up better because there's some weight in the actual hook bait. I think they show the bite up better. There we go. Now as predicted, they're quite small. A nice fish to catch on a nice little bit of tackle and they'll probably get a bit bigger as we fish. Nice little fish. And I just remember that last time I fished here on that um, angling trust match, that's what I caught, I think something like 200 little skimmers. It was just a, an out and out shipping race. It was, it was good fishing. Oh, sacre bleu. But with these little skimmers, for some reason, you do catch them better over hardly any bait. And they are easier to catch with pellets than they are um, like maggots and stuff. I don't know why that is. But they just seem to be more effective when you fish from the pellets. But the tiniest little bite. I guess they, they are little fish though, aren't they? They're delicate. Now I think you might be better off with a pink elastic on. Nevertheless, if you caught one of them every chucking, you'd have a good weight in a match, especially on a silverfish only match. I'm just going to show you like how many fish we can catch without feeding. So we've put in three little nuggets in total since we started and then I've just dinked in a little tiny little nugget of bait and let's see how many fish we can catch off that tiny amount of bait and you may think well what, what about if you want to catch bigger skimmers now in my experience on this kind of water the bigger skimmers just turn up they don't it's not a bait thing it's a time of day thing when you catch them you've not put a load of bait in and they've suddenly started feeding it's it's just a time of day it's Then bigger fish are old and wise. A bit like the carp, I suppose. I'm just making sure to keep those other lines got fed because I think we could we could have fished that bomb and just kept catching carp to be fair, because there's there's there are obviously enough out there to keep us busy. I've got the yellow, yellow zip on, which is nice. I reckon the pink could be even better. All in the top lip. Nice fishing. Just make sure you get all that smeg off your line, because it's is important. Again, I need to top up because I. I reckon it's 
probably three or four fish per feed would be my guess. Now to present the rig, what I like to do is just flick it. It's towing ever so slightly to my right. So I like to flick my bulk to my left. Let the bulk come under and then sort of lower the float down like slowly. Show the pellet to the fish and then hopefully catch their eye as, as it's dropping through the water. It's quite a coloured lake this and feels a little bit better. Net this one. Not massive but nice fish all the same. And that is like your bread and butter Geary's fish. There's millions of these in here and like I say when you're catching them quickly they can be really good. Particularly in matches that are silverfish only. Which are obviously very popular at the moment. I know they have silverfish matches here sometimes. It can be very popular. Feed. I'm getting bites quick and I think that that's a sign that there's no build up bait on the bottom when you're getting bites quick. The only other thing to consider is actually fishing closer in. You could probably catch these stamp fish closer in but we are catching one a chuck so you can't do better than that really. Let's see if we get any bites on the pinging line on the pole. Probably what we should try next. Yeah, this this method where you feed barely anything with either pellets or like I said, pinkies are quite good. It's a brilliant way to catch catch weights on commercials. They're different venues these are to natural. They're different fish, they behave different. You know, as on a natural venue you could maybe put a bit of a bed of bait down and wait for the fish to turn up. They're kind of already in your peg on commercials and it's more about managing the lake bed, managing, you know, if you get a build up of bait on the bottom, you just don't catch these little skimmers. It's quite interesting how little you have to feed to catch them. Especially on these shallower venues. It could be different on, you know, more deeper waters, but certainly on these shallow waters, feeding less is so often more particularly for these little skimmers. You see, I've got my float, it's a 0.4 bulk, I've got it dotted right down, as low as I can get it, really. You've got them, they're delicate fish, they are, them little skimmers, and it's hard to see the bites from them. It's a tiny little indication there. So this is the longest we've actually waited for a bite, which may mean we need to feed again, so it's not a problem. We'll just put a little, a little tiny marble of ground bait in again and fish it out. I mean, I've got my float so darted down that maybe even the camera will struggle to pick it up. Just lay that in, because that's just drifted down toe of my fishing position. Now you may be thinking why I'm not loose feeding. I mentioned that I think the noise of pellets in the water is so attractive to carp that if I was to loose feed pellets on this line and try and feed them on my long line for carp, I think you're getting mixed messages so the fish don't know where to go on each line. Of course I want to catch skimmers, but in a match I, I want to catch the carp really. And if I was to loose feed here and there, there's potential that I could get split the carp over the two lines if that makes sense. I want the impact of the noise to be on that 40 metre line, not the that needs feeding again, not the shimmer line. So that's the reason why I've opted to uh, go about it that way. Let's just put another little bit of bait in. Tiny little amount. See them pellets are so good, look, I've just struck a couple of times, shipped back in. 
still on. And that's a feed pellet, not a not an expander. So nothing, a tiny bit of ground bait with an odd micro in it. And that should get us another little flurry of bites. I'm also going to try that pinging line because there's a chance there could be some carp on that now. It's been going for a little while. It's funny, the bites have just completely stopped. There we go. Right, yeah, that's a bit jumbly. I say you could easily use the pink one. If I do look a tench or a carp or there's like these brown goldfish things in here, then I kind of want to get give myself a chance of getting them out as well. And the yellow's working fine for them. I mean they're like three to four ounce fish, so I'll just catch another one. And then I'm gonna feed it. I'm gonna just have a quick look on that hard pellet line just to see if there's any fish on it yet. And then I can work out whether I need to up the bait or keep it the same because I've just been pinging two, two or three pellets every time. And I can work out whether I need to up, up it because it might be that there's some skimmers out there eating on my bait, leaving nothing left for the carp. So I want to just have a quick look for five minutes, see if I hook a carp, and then maybe up the bait or if I feel like there's nothing there at all, then I might have to change things somehow. got a feeling that that longer pole line with the hard pellets will come good later on. As this I think will get better later on. I think it is... Oh, no one just rolled on me out. So hard for me to sit here doing this when I know that I could catch a carp every chuck in on that bottom. <laughs> just want to be doing that. I do enjoy catching these silvers. But I've got to be honest. I'm itching to get on that longer pole line, so I'm just going to catch this one and then we're going to have a little go on that because I'm itching to see if there's any carp or what have you on that. They're like peas in a pod. They're not big fish at all, they're like three ounces. Like I say, in a silverfish match, them little beauties soon add up. Okay, so we've just got my head down a little bit on them skimmers. And I've hooked something <laughs> that isn't one. I don't know what it is. Oh, look at that. Little Crusian looking character. I don't know what he is actually. Is he an F1? Might be an F1. I think there are some F1s in this lake. But I'll tell you what, he's alright, isn't he? He's nice. Perfectly lip hooked. Very welcome. Give me a nice little run around on the old yellow zip, but yeah. Cracking little fish. Well, it's getting back and we'll crack on with the skimmers. Just popped out to the hard pellet line and we've it went under as soon as it settled pretty much. And I think we've got a nice little carp. Oh hi, look at him. <laughs> Old shoulders, look at him. What a beautiful little fish. He looks absolutely brand spanking new. I don't know if he's like a one that I've just put in or... But he's great, I like him. Just get the hook out. I reckon he's never, he looks like he's never been caught before. Look at a cracking fish that is. That is literally first chuck on the hard pellets. And we've got that little beauty, so that's a good sign, isn't it? go so turns out we were probably feeding that bang on because we've had two goes and we've hooked two fish we had that lovely little i'm going to call him shoulders and then we've hooked one here that feels much more considerable unless he's just a spirited little devil but it's a great start and as much as i enjoy Fishing for those little skimmers and like I caught that nice little F1 and whatnot. 
quite like clunking carp, I've got to be honest. Especially fishing like this, where it's nice fishing, where you're dinking pellets in. I'll tell you what, it's another one of them little nice little carp. I'll tell you what, I'd take one of these a chuck all day. They're lovely fish. So I don't know if they've just stuck these in or, or what, but they are. I mean, that's just like carbon copy of the first one with slightly less shoulder. Lovely fish. Gorgeous fish them, aren't they? Slipping back. But what's uh, noticeable is that both bites has come as the rig settled and it goes back to other videos that I've done recently. When it comes to hard pellet fishing, I do like having my shot out, like strung out a little bit and picking that float up and laying it back in and lifting and dropping. I know some anglers don't like lifting and dropping. But for me, in hard pellet fishing, when you're pinging two or three pellets in and doing things like that, I do think it just works in harmony. So I'm laying the rig out, almost like you would like maggot fishing, like flicking it out away from the pole tip, letting it come in and then just pinging pellets as accurately as I can over the top. And I've got better at my feeding because my feeding was poor to start with, but we've got there now. I'm not forgetting to feed that bomb line though because I think I'm going to have a look on that again in a bit because I enjoyed that getting towed in with them fish. But yeah, that's great, isn't it? Like two chucks on this, two nice carp. I assume they're just like stocky carp, I suppose, but. Very nice fish. Whoa. Now just play about a bit because sometimes I like to react to, so when the bait hits the water, I'll sometimes I'll show you what I mean. I'll sometimes actually like lift the float. I'd like lift it up and lay it on the surface like that, and it just lets that hook bait sort of flutter down again. Found that works well in some venues this one's really colored it's a Gary's is always colored I'm not sure why it's obviously how it's dug and the lake bed it's always like this brown color so it might not be you know lifting and dropping might not be as good in this venue but some places it's the best way to instigate bites and then on some days you just got to sit there as patient as you can so it's worth doing both like trying the active approach and, and the patient approach you want to be right on the day but I tend to feel like with them smaller cow like we've just had they're quite hungry active fish so lifting and dropping and flicking the rig about is probably better but we'll experiment as the day goes on It makes me wonder if these were about in my um, skimmer line. Obviously we caught that F1 on it and then after that F1 it just went dead for skimmers and I just wonder whether there's a few carp knocking around. Good chance. There go. See, that just rigged nicely settled and down it went. I think that is so com you know, common with hard pellet fishing. I really like that kind of fishing and it's why I shot my rig like I do. I think it's so important. There's like another one of them little carp to be fair. Great fishing though. Yeah, we had them three nice carp on the, on the bomb. Now three, oh, three sort of these beautiful lines. I mean, look at that one. It's like a linear, look at that. What a cracking little fish that is. Really fishing. Can't knock that. And like I say, another one that came just as the rig sort of nicely settled. 
So I can only assume it just catches their eye and they go for it. And of course we're feeding with a catapult as them pellets just falling through the water at all times or I mean, very regularly. So we want to hope to do something similar. <laughs> come up to the surface when I hooked it and uh, looked like he was going to tear off but he actually he's quite well behaved quite nice is we've got a really high bank behind us with one of them stockies and I've just laid the roller flat on the on the ground above in like the closed position and it's it's absolutely perfect because it is awkward shipping here but obviously having a roller that can lay like that is is handy that's the biggest one yet I mean it's three pound probably cracking fish and this is <laughs> just brilliant fishing isn't it Look at that. They're just, the fish are just stunning. That's a great big F1 this time. <laughs> what a lovely fish. And I, I, I just can't stress how much I love this kind of fishing. Catching quality fish on the hard pellet, like long, it's just, I just love it. Now, there's one thing that I just wanted to quickly show you, and I spoke about this on uh, Facebook before, and it's about my elastic setup. Now, this lake is, although this is the deep part of the lake, it's actually quite shallow. Which means on lakes like this, these open water ones, often when you hook them on the pole, they go like that at a million miles an hour. And they can bottom you out. Now I always have, and it's a bit unsightly, but I always have like an extra 10 inches or even a, close to a foot of extra elastic there. So when my elastic's under tension, I've got this spare elastic. Then I've got a zip adjust the puller bead there, which grips the pink one, it grips the elastic. So I've got perfect tension. But if I do a carp that absolutely tears off, I've got this extra elastic that will pull through the bead. It doesn't pull through normally, but when it's under pressure and you're like at bottom mount and it's at critical point, that will pull through. And look how much extra elastic you get. Like another, well, I don't know what my wingspan is, but it's, look at that extra elastic. And you can imagine that sometimes when you're bottomed out, that will go through and just give you that bit extra. Just, it saved my bacon so many times. And that little product there, it's just brilliant. I couldn't be without it when I'm fishing for carp. Yes, it looks a bit unsightly having this dangle out there, but I'm not bothered about that. I just want the carp in the net. And for me, that little bead has saved my bacon so many times. Look at that beauty. That's probably the best of the bunch so far. I've had five or six of those lovely stockies now. And then, well, I mean, look at the scales on it, on his back. What cracking fish. Look good in someone's pond, that. And that... It's summing up the day, really. The fish are amazing quality. I mean, look at that fish. Beauty. Off he goes. And that is summing up the day very nicely here on Big Gear. Is because we've had, I don't know, five or six fish now on that long pole. And every single one of them has been a little stunner. Proper lovely dark mirrors. And then that ghosty. And the fishing, I said to the cameraman, I just love this kind of fishing when you fishing hard pellets on the bottom. You're not foul looking them because there's not millions of them in your peg and you've got to work for every bite, but every bite is like in the top lip. And it's simple fishing, but it is just, I just love it. So let's get on it because I'm really enjoying this. This is uh, better than I was expecting actually. I thought it might be a bit hard today, but we had those three on the worm and then we've had five or six on this. And to be honest, those skimmers were the skimmer fishing was good, but they were a bit on the small side for my liking. So, me being an aggressive angler, I like catching bigger fish, and uh, this is absolutely perfect. Now, I'm keeping that long pole obviously fed. Uh, the bomb, sorry, because I fancy another go on that in a minute, and plus I need to eat my sandwiches. Um, but in a match, you just... 
love a little dink. Just as soon as the float went over like that, just a little dink and missed it, but that's what the bites have been. Okay, so we've had a brilliant day's fishing actually, and it's been probably better than I expected. We uh, had that slow start on the feeder, didn't really happen. Then we went on the bottom and caught some nice carp on that. Went on the skimmers and there was plenty of bites skimmer fishing, but they were small. Caught that bonus F1, which was nice. But to be honest, it's all been about the long pole today. This has been fantastic fishing, really enjoyable fishing. And uh, I just want to just quickly run through, like summarise how we're catching them, because it's really interesting fishing. And I've noticed, since I've... I've actually just tried the bomb off camera. We, got, we were getting some drone shots and bits and bobs like that. And uh, I wasn't fishing the pole at the time. And I've got a bit giddy with my feed. You know, been maybe putting four and five pellets in at a time, and which sounds like nothing. But when you're hard pellet fishing, there's a fine balance between how much, you know, how much bait to actually put in. And I've obviously got a few too many pellets on the bottom. And I'm just foul looking a few. And I think my point is that you've just got to be so careful. We were catching before, lovely, hardly losing any, and we were just literally feeding two pellets. And I think that's so important. That's been the biggest lesson. Like, less is more so often. You can feed two pellets quite regular, but that has been the right amount for the day. So being, being frugal with the bait has been best today and trying to be obviously as accurate as possible and then working the rig as well because it's been noticeable that all the bites have come as the, as the rig has settled you know it's gone through the water and it's either settled and it, or I've lifted and dropped it I think if I was to come back I'd, on a day like this where it's been as calm as it has today I'd probably set up an even lighter float a 4x12 maybe even a 4x10 something like a Cipri it's just something that I could string some light shots at and have that six mil really fluttering through the water. This is working great, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think you could catch even more if you'd have had a, another rig set up. Just missed a little bite there. But that has definitely been the lesson of the day, to, to feed it frugally. And I've chucked the bomb back out, interestingly. And I've been much more aggressive with the bait. Obviously, while I've been fishing the pole, I've just been pouching six to eight, ten pellets out there. And when I've gone back on the bomb, it's all gone a bit funny. I could get bites on it, but it's not been as good to, than when I've been there this morning and I'd only just started feeding it and there wasn't a lot of bait out there. And I think that that, it is getting cold. It feels cold today. And I think sometimes we can get a bit giddy with the bait. I know I certainly can. But it's a lesson I learned at Lindome in the spring. I was fishing there quite a lot. And sometimes, just feeding like one and two pellets, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're fishing hard pellets, it can be enough. It's noticeable that that has been the key to today, which is good because a bag of pellets is going to last you ages. It's been beautiful fishing. So I think if I was coming back in a match, I'd set this rig up to point four. I would definitely have maybe a, a four twelve, or if it was really calm, I'd even consider a four by ten because even though it's four and a half, five foot deep, we're still catching them as that hook bait is settling. So let's just catch one more. Just to end the little video because it's been really enjoyable. And I must say that I've been to Packington loads of times filming and fishing matches here and, and stuff. And it is one, genuinely one of my favourite places to come fishing. It's always good, it's reliable, the fish are nice. It's a pretty place. It's popular, there's loads of people fishing here today, even on a cold Thursday day in October. It's a really good place. And the, the staff here are always really helpful and make sure you have a good day. So well worth checking out and it's right in the heart of the country literally it's a, it's a great venue and there's a bit of something for everyone here you've got little lakes you know snake style lakes put that on the drop uh, little snake style lakes in siblings and 
Then you've got little gearies, which is like a bit of an in-betweener, little 20 meter trucks for the method, even a waggler. You've got this lake that's like a big open lake with carp and skimmers. And you've got molens, which is just the right box of tricks. You've got method trucks for the fire bank, pellet waggler. Just something for everyone here. It's a real good venue. They've even got syndicate lakes if you want to target bigger carp. Is it off site? There's there's even more lakes, so it's just a fantastic venue. Can't speak highly enough of it. And it's what I think probably what I like the most about it is that it's not just a out and out bagging venue. Don't get me wrong, there's still good weights here, but it is a, a venue where you've got to like think about what you're doing. It's not you're not just going to get a hundred carp in the edge all day. It's like you might catch two or three down the edge later on and you might have to fish a long pole and you might have to tick a few off on the short pole and catch a few on the bomb and it's thinking fishing, it's good. Real good fishing. And this long pole has definitely been the way today. Just keeping it nice and proactive with that rig, laying it in and lifting and dropping and pinging, been good along with those fish we caught on the bomb, obviously. Just trying to eke out one more. I can't tell you how cold it is now. This morning we had that lovely sun out and it was quite pleasant sat here. Really felt mild, but since the sun's gone in, really feels autumnal now. Just a little indication on the float. Just, a, just lifted and dropped. I fed, lifted and dropped, and as has been the case so often today. There we go. And it's actually, this is one that's tore off as I've hooked it, and the elastic's pulled through that bead on me on my top kit, which I obviously mentioned earlier. And it just is that extra insurance policy on your setup. I like to have built in when I'm fishing for carp. A number of times, especially like here, it's got like a 16B911 on. It's not, this, you know, it's a lovely balanced hook for this setup, but you want to make sure you get the fish out. Look at that, it's a lovely carp to end the session on. Oh, beauty. Oh, lovely common to end on. So, yeah, so if you are looking for a fishery in the Midlands, I mean, I'd be amazed if you haven't already been if you live in this area. But if you are looking for new venues for either club fishing or pleasure fishing, or you just want to try somewhere new, because there's always open matches here and all sorts, then check out Packington Summers, because it is a cracking venue. I'm going to slip this one back, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to keep fishing, but there you go. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again on the next video.